Filibusters are an ever-present problem in the Senate. But did you ever wonder where that term comes from? Filibustering actually has a fascinating origin, filled with pirates and revolutionaries. Hey, Cypher here with another engaging etymology, this time the filibuster. The original word comes from a Dutch word I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce, but it means freeboater. That was an old term for pirate, specifically if they were robbing something. It came into the English language as slang in the 16th century, and remained about piracy for centuries. So how did obsolete slang for pirates become a word for a delay tactic in Congress? In the early to mid 19th century, there was a transition in the term. There were some, what we could call enterprising individuals, who wanted to conquer more land for their own countries. These people had no affiliation with their country of origin, but they just thought that they could go and conquer another country on their own. The most famous and successful of these was William Walker, an idiot who managed to gather enough people to take over Nicaragua for a couple of years. In many cases, these people's countries tried to stop them. For instance, William Walker was threatened with prison in the US on numerous occasions, but the federal government was so weak in California in the 1850s, and he was so popular there, that no one did anything about him while he gathered an army and started breaking the law. Because they were flagrantly violating any semblance of sovereignty, people called them filibusters because they were like pirates trying to steal entire countries. Filibustering became quite a problem in American history, though I have to say that there was some filibustering happening from other countries, even one from Canada into the US, but also a couple more the other way around. There's a whole bunch of these, and each one is its own story. Suffice it to say, this was fairly prevalent, especially in the 1850s, and with covert agencies in the 1950s and 60s. This still seems far away from our current usage of the term, but it actually is fairly close. In 1851, a filibuster expedition was helped by an American named John Quitman. He was supporting a Venezuelan who was filibustering to Cuba. It failed miserably, as any stupid plan to take over a country like this does. But John Quitman didn't quit. He wanted to extend slavery further south. So, in 1853, he began preparing a filibuster expedition himself. It was even backed by the Pierce administration, but they turned away, and they never left for Cuba. This whole thing turned into a political nightmare. People were yelling and screaming about it on the floor of the Senate. It became part of the conversation on slavery that had been developing over the decades, and people began to block decisions by talking too much. By the end of the Civil War, the word filibuster had come to be a political statement about stealing the conversation in direct relation to military action. It continued to morph, and by the end of the 19th century, it had changed to what we know today specifically about blocking decisions, and a specific tactic to steal the conversation away, where a person takes up time by delaying the vote until there is not enough people to continue the debate. That is what it is used for today, and has been so since the 1890s. From pirates to paramilitary to political tactics, filibustering has a long history behind its usage. Makes you wonder what else is hidden on our language. Well, I've got an entire playlist on that, and you can click on the link below. Don't forget to subscribe while you're at it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and check out some previous episodes while you're at it. I'll see you next time.